Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fan. Today, I'll be talking about Monster Rancher. For those of you who don't know what it is, and I'm pretty sure most of you don't, Monster Rancher was a very short-lived TV series here in America. How short? It only went for one year. And there's actually an interesting story behind that, but I'll get into it later. The basic plot behind Monster Rancher is it's a story about a kid named Genki who wins a brand new disc of his favorite video game on the PlayStation. He pops the game in, and at the same time, a girl named Holly pops in a special disc to call forth a monster. When the discs start spinning, Genki gets pulled into the video game, along with all the stuff in his room, mostly his backpack and rollerblades. In no time flat, they're attacked by evil monsters who try to take them. Of course, they manage to beat them back and escape, Holly explains to Genki that what she was trying to do was call forth a monster known as the Phoenix to try to stop an evil overlord who, believe it or not, I'm not making this up, his name is actually Moo. Yeah, Moo, as in the sound a cow makes. You can laugh at his name, but this guy is no laughing matter because he is incredibly powerful. He has the ability to turn good monsters bad. And he has such incredible strength and power, he's almost unstoppable. Only one monster can beat him, and that's the Phoenix. That's who she was trying to conjure up, but she ended up pulling Genki out instead. They go back to try to see if Genki's disc, which came with him, might call forth the Phoenix. Instead, they end up creating a monster named Mochi. He's a cute little fellow, but he's actually pretty tough. Since the disc did not conjure up the Phoenix, Genki, Holly, Mochi, and Holly's monster friend Suezo are on a quest to find the Phoenix and to stop Mu. I should mention about Suezo. Obviously, he's a weird Pac-Man looking creature, but he's actually pretty tough. He can actually kick with that weird little tail of his, and he can do a tongue slap, and believe it or not, he has the ability to see great distances with that eye of his. He's pretty much a comedy relief character, but he can actually be pretty serious. Along the way, they battle all kinds of monsters, and they make quite a few monster friends. The first friend they make along the way is a rock monster named Golem. He's a real kind, gentle fellow. Don't let his hard, rough exterior fool you. He's the nicest guy you ever could meet. He doesn't like to fight, but he realizes he needs to try and do his part to try to free this world from Moo's power. And even though he doesn't like to fight, when his friends are in danger, he steps in. Because that's the kind of friend he is. When you're in trouble, he's got your back. In a way, he's also kind of the voice of reason, because there's quite a few times where he makes a big solemn speech about how fighting is wrong. I cannot really argue with that, but even he had to admit to himself that sometimes, for the greater good, you must fight for what you believe in. Along the way, they meet a wolf named Tiger. He's got incredible power. He's fast, he's tough, he's gritty. He has the ability to conjure up wind out of his mouth, even a small blizzard. He even shoots lightning out of his horns which for some reason during the whole season they called it Torpedo Attack. Again, I don't know why, because it's clearly lightning. He's the more serious one in the group, and he joins with them mostly because he wants to try to destroy Mu, because Mu had captured his brother and turned him evil. Shortly after Tiger joins up, they meet Hare, who is obviously a hare. As you could tell by looking at his hands, he is quite a boxer. But there's more to him than just that. He's also very smart. In fact, he's actually the brains of the outfit. There's been quite a few episodes where he conjures up great plans to defeat their enemies. That's all the friends they make along the way that join the group. But they do make other friends, such as the formerly evil Pixie, who was one of the big bad four. Basically, one of Moo's top generals. She is incredibly powerful. She's got incredible strength, agility, and a lot of lightning attacks. And of course, her sidekick, Big Blue, who is obviously a golem, but he's, well, blue. They also make other friends, such as pirate dragons, as well as other monsters and humans who want to escape Moo's terrible rule. And right to the end of Season 1, we realize how powerful Moo really is. And we also learn about who he is. It turns out he's Holly's father. What happened was he found a temple and accidentally released Moo, and Moo had corrupted his soul. That's what Mu really is, a dark soul, and believe it or not, he becomes even more powerful with hatred. The more you hate him, the more angry you get at him, the more powerful he gets. After a big climactic battle with Mu, which ends in retreat, the season ends there, and that's what we got here in America. So now we come to the part where we ask the question, why did this show only air for one year here in America? Fox Kids aired this show back during its later years when they fused with Kids WB. 
But for some reason, they only bought the rights to the first season, and not the other two seasons, which wrap everything up. For some reason that I cannot find the answer to, Fox Kids treated this like filler time. I'm not kidding. They really treated it like filler time. Because all they did was just air the one season, and then they just showed it again for a couple more years. Like I said, they just treated it like filler time. For some reason, Fox Kids did not take this show seriously. And the sad thing is, it's actually a pretty good show. It's got a lot of good action, good comedy, and there's even some good moral lessons behind it, too, even. The characters are very likable. They got their strengths. They got their weaknesses. They lend a lot to the story. In fact, one character I really should tell you more about is Genki. He's not your average human involved with monsters. No, sir. This kid straps on his rollerblades and beats the tar out of other monsters. He doesn't just stand on the sidelines waiting for the monsters to do the work. He gets in and helps them. That's my kind of guy right there. Holly doesn't really do too much for the show. She does keep the team together, and she does help any way she can, but she doesn't fight monsters, and she does try to lend hope and courage to the others, which actually does help a lot more than you think in this show. But you would have to watch Season 2 and Season 3 to understand. Fortunately, you can watch all the seasons on YouTube and on DVD. Now, I know how it ends, but I don't want to ruin it for anybody, so for once, I'm going to keep my mouth shut as to what happens next. You can just look it up on YouTube, and you'll see how it ends. So my recommendation, if you ever get the time, check this show out. Trust me, you're going to love it. This is Movie Fan, signing off.